address and address payable. Now it's time for us to look at the address data type. Now this type comes in two different formats or flavors, if you will, and this is how we define them. We can simply start by writing address and let's write test address A. And for this one, I'm going to give it a value. Now, what value does an address hold? Well, it holds a 20 byte value, which is the same as an Ethereum address. So we can go and open our MetaMask and copy our address and paste it in here. And let's not forget our semicolon. This is now our address stored in this variable. This address can store any address, so not only user accounts, but also other contract accounts. And this is important because sometimes we need to have reference of a certain contract's address or a user's address for us to do some operations. The address type has some cool functionality with it. We can, for instance, use this variable and check the balance of this account. To do this, firstly, I'm going to use a different address because we are on the VM network. So let's take our account over here. Let's copy this and add this as the address. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a function and call it get balance. This function is going to be public. And don't worry about the syntax right now for functions. We'll discuss this. For now, we want this function to return to us something when we call it. And the thing that we want it to return is essentially this test address A, the balance of it. So we can write it like so. Now you'll see there's an error. And it's because we are returning something and we're not telling the function that it needs to return something. So we're going to write here at the top, it needs to return a uint and this will be a uint 256 and that is because the balance is in the form of a number so that's why we say it's going to return an unsigned integer next it is still warning us and saying that we can restrict this function to be view now we'll discuss this like i said but for now just know that making a function view means that we are not altering the state, we're simply returning some data and referencing some state variables. Let's now deploy our contract so we can deploy it. And here it is. And we can now get the balance. If we do, we can see that the balance of this account is 9999999. It's a very big number, but that's because it gives it back to us in way. And if we go up, we can see that here is our actual balance. So it does make sense. Okay, so that's how we read the balance. Now, what is this address payable? Well, let me show you an example. Let's go ahead and copy this address. And maybe what we are going to do is we are going to refer this address, copy it and paste it in here. Let's remember to switch back to our main account. Now this is gonna be our address b and now let's state that this address is going to be payable meaning that we'll be able to pay something or send some ether to this address now there is an error and this is because it says the address is not implicitly convertible so what it means is that we need to wrap our address in a payable clause like so and now this address we can pay some ether too so let's create a function so we can actually pay this address. So we're going to say pay address is going to be our function. It will be public. And now we need to basically say that we want to send to this address dot transfer. Now we need to specify a value. When you make an address payable, there's two members that get added transfer and send. Both of them do the same thing, but they fail differently. And these days it's better to use something called call, which we'll discuss in the transfer section. For now, I just want to illustrate the point that we can send some ether to this address. Now transfer takes in one parameter, which is the value 
in way. So we need to specify the way amount and we know that it's quite difficult to work out. You can use conversion. But instead of this, I'm going to simply say I want to send one ether to this address and I can use it like this as well. There are these cool keywords which we'll touch on that you can use in a Solidity contract. We can go ahead and deploy this contract and here it is. But when we click on pay address, we see an error occurs and we can see that pay address failed and that's because there's really no ether in the contract to even send. So how do we deploy a contract and send it some ether? Well, we need to use the constructor. Now we'll discuss a constructor, but for now a constructor can be payable, telling this contract that we are going to send it some ether. So now you'll see that this deploy is red, meaning that it's expecting some ether. I'm going to change the ETH value to 5 and deploy the contract. Now I can see that there's 5 ETHER in the account. And before we click on pay, we can see that this account has 100 ETHER. 5 ETHER was deducted from my main account, but we expect this account to get some ETHER once we click on this function. Let's execute pay address and it was successful. We can see that the balance is now deducted to 4 ether and in the other account we've now got 101 ether. We can do it for or a few more times until it runs out and just simply fails. And in the account we've now got 105 ether. Alright, so this is what you need to know about the address type for now. An address, if it's not payable, won't be able to accept ether. And we get to pay Ether to an address if we specify it as a payable address. And this is how we can use addresses in our contract.